boys and girls, it's Miss Darlene. Miss Debbie's still not with us, but she'll be back soon. You're probably watching this on October 11th, and we're going to keep talking about Mr. Noah. We talked about him last week, and we have more to tell. But we're also going to sing some songs. Theo's going to visit us. We're going to talk about our memory verse from last week, and we're going to have that story about Noah, and we're going to do our lesson page from your Bible hugs, and finally we will end with a prayer. And let's get started by singing Jesus Loves Me. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. And now let's sing Jesus Loves the Little Children. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. And I know some of you love My God is So Big, and that's what we will sing next. So get ready. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do for you. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do for you. The mountains are his, the valleys are his, the trees are his handiwork too. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do for you. And now it's time to get quiet again to sing, God is so good, and he is so good to us. He loves us so much. So let's sing quietly. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. All right, in our Bible, in Deuteronomy, we're going to read our Bible words again, Deuteronomy 6, 5, and the long verse says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. But the short version says, Love God with your whole heart, Deuteronomy 6, 5. And we're going to say it again. Love God, you say it, with your whole heart. Deuteronomy 6, 5. Now let's put it all together. Love God with your whole heart. Deuteronomy 6, 5. Good job. And boys and girls, I want to show you something. I'm going to move my Bible so it doesn't get wet. I have a bowl of water on the table, and it's probably a little hard for you to see. And I have a bottle, and my bottle has a little hole in it. But I'm going to put some water in my bottle. And, oh my goodness, do you see what's happening? The water is spilling out of the bottle where the hole is. Hmm. I'm going to try this again. I'm going to put some water in my bottle. And this time, I'm going to put the lid on the bottle. And look, the water has stopped spilling out. The water's not spilling, although if I squeeze the bottle, it does start again. So let's talk about that for a minute. Love is a great thing that God gives to us. And if we love God with our whole hearts, we can be filled all the way to the top of our hearts with love. But guess what? Our hearts are going to be like the bottle. And after a while, that love is going to start spilling out. But Jesus is like the lid to the bottle. And when we put the lid on, and I didn't seal it very well, but if you seal it tightly, then the water didn't spill out. And Jesus acts like a lid so our love doesn't spill out. He takes care of us. So we can't keep our hearts full of love on our own, but with God's help we can. So were you surprised that the water was spilling out and then it wasn't or it wasn't very much? Did that surprise you? Yeah, it's a little bit of a surprise, isn't it? Isn't it great, though, that God never tells a lie ever, ever, ever? Sometimes I might forget and say something that I didn't mean to say, or maybe I will 
say just a little lie, but guess what? God doesn't tell any lies, not even little lies. God is always truthful, so we can always, always trust God. Love God with your whole heart. And our Bible point for today is God never lies. Because we know God never lies, we know that he will always, always help us. And speaking of helpers, usually Theo's a good helper, and I think I hear him coming. Do you hear him, everyone? Hi, everybody. Well, hello there, Theo. It's so good to see you at church with us today. But, uh-oh, what is it you have here? I'm going to hold it up for the boys and girls to see. I picked up a rock on my way over here. I see that, but Theo, why did you do that? I found out my friend lied to me, so I'm going to his house and throw a rock at him. Oh no, Theo, that's not a nice thing to do. He should not have told you a lie, but that doesn't make it okay for you to throw something at him. Maybe instead, you could talk to him about it and then the two of you can sort it out. You're right, but it still makes me really sad. Yeah, I understand, Theo. I would get sad too, but you know what? There's someone who never, ever, ever tells lies. Friends, let's say our Bible point for Theo. God never lies. In fact, that reminds me of a time God made a promise to a man named Noah. God told the man to build a big boat called an ark, and we learned about that last week. And we're going to hear some more about how God did what he said he would do because he never lies. That's going to be our story today, Theo. I'm so glad there's someone who never lies. Yeah. God. Yeah. I'm going to go talk to my friend. But don't worry, I'll put the rock back where I found it. I am so glad to hear that, Theo. That sounds great. Thanks for stopping by. Friends, let's all wave goodbye. Bye, Theo. Bye, Theo. We'll see you next time. So, I want you to think about maybe has someone lied to you before? Yeah, maybe they did. Told you something that wasn't right. Sometimes that happens, and hopefully when they did, you didn't throw a rock at them. Maybe you said to them, hey, it made me feel sad when you told me that. Maybe you talked to them about it. Does it make you feel happy knowing that God never lies? It makes me happy, too. I know when he tells me something, it's true, and I can trust him. Many times we can feel sad or even mad when people tell a lie, or they don't do what they say they're going to do. And God never lies, and he wants us to know that we can always count on him to do everything he says he will do for us. And now I'm going to turn back in my Bible. Last week was Genesis 6. Now we're at Genesis 7. The next story in the Bible is going to be the story we talk about. And we're going to hear a lot of that on our CD today, but I'll tell you something first. God told Noah that he would save Noah's family. And he told Noah to build that big boat called an ark. And um, then God told Noah to bring two of every kind of animal to the ark. We're going to help Noah. Um, we're going to pretend to help Noah with the ark. So let's pretend that the animals are coming in. And I want you, what if it's a lion? What noise would you make? <laughs> yeah, that's the noise a lion makes. What if it was a puppy dog? What noise would you make? Very good. Um, let's see. What if it was a snake? Good job. After Noah's family and two of every animal were on board, God shut the door and a big storm came. Can you make a storm noise? God said he'd take care of Noah's family and the animals during the big storm. We're going to listen to what God did for everyone on the ark. And while we do that, I'm going to take our picture down because we have a finished ark back there. And so we don't need to see this ark that's only part of the way finished. Listen carefully during our Bible story. Every time you hear a doorbell ring, say with me. God keeps all his promises. God keeps Last all week, his promises. we learned about Noah in our Bible. Noah was a good man, so God said he would save Noah's family. God told Noah to build a big boat called an ark. Noah, I'm going to destroy the earth because everyone is so wicked and bad. You're the only one who still wants to do good and who loves me. 
I want you to build an ark to save you from the terrible rains that I will send to destroy the earth. Yes, Lord, I will build it, just the way you tell me. Noah obeyed God and built the ark, just as he was told. It took him many years, a very long, long time, to build the boat. Hey, Noah, what you building? Looks like a waste of time to me. Every day we get our beautiful weather. Let's rain. Yeah, Noah, you're crazy. A flood? Ha <laughs> ha. Noah, you're doing a good job building this ark. Bring two of every animal to the ark. I will save them from the flood as well. Soon, all kinds of animals began to come to Noah's house. Lots and lots of animals. Even animals Noah had never seen before. The animals came in pairs. One boy and one girl animal. Children, help me count the animals. Here come the bears. One, two, now the cows. One, two, hurry little turtles. One, two. Here's our doggies. One, two. Uh-oh. Come here, you monkeys. And stop playing around. One, two. There. Everyone is inside now. The ark is pretty full. The Bible says that seven days after Noah, his family, and the animals were all safely on the ark, the rains began to fall. All the water in the clouds began to fall. But... God keeps all his promises. The rains began to fall harder and harder, but... God keeps all his promises. At first, the water made puddles, then shallow pools, and then deeper waters. The water began to rise higher and higher and higher. The heavy rainwater made big waves, bigger waves, and then huge waves on the earth. For 40 days, the flood kept coming on the earth, but... God keeps all his promises. As the waters continued to rise, the ark floated safely on top of the water. The water covered the earth, high above the trees, high above the mountains. The whole earth was underwater, but God kept Noah, his family, and all the safe inside the ark, just as he had promised. After the rain stopped, Noah, his family, and all the animals were still safe inside the floating ark. God sent a wind over the earth to dry up the water. Slowly, the water began to go away. After many more days, the ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat. Noah opened the window and released a bird to see if the bird could find dry ground on which to land. Fly, bird! Go find dry land so we can come out of this ark and build our new home. When the bird came back, Noah knew he had not found dry ground, but... God keeps all his promises. You're back already? We'll try again another day. Noah sent the bird out again, and it returned with a green leaf. This is a good sign. Lamb! 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 Oh, Lamb! It means that there are plants growing out there. The next time Noah sent out the bird, it didn't come back. The bird must have found dry land. Soon, Noah, his family, and all the animals could come out of the ark. God keeps all his promises. Noah, you have been a faithful man and obeyed all my words. You and your family have made me very happy. God told Noah and his family it was safe to come out of the ark. The earth was ready to live on again. God keeps all his promises. God kept all his promises to Noah. Everyone made it through the storm safely. God gave them a sign. It was the rainbow in the sky that always reminds us that God keeps all his promises. God said many things to Noah and he never lied about anything he said he'd do. He kept all his promises. Do you remember how God, or the sign that God gave them to show that he kept his promise? It was the rainbow. He gave them the rainbow and he told them he would never flood the whole earth again. Maybe mommy and daddy or some another adult or someone who's a good reader can read the Bible to you so you could find some other promises God made. 
Remember, God never lies. Everything he says he'll do, he does. God kept all his promises to Noah, and he followed through on everything he said he would do. We can trust God and believe he'll do everything he says he'll do for us, too. And one thing we're going to do is we're going to take our Bible Hugs page. And remember, Mommy and Daddy can pause now and do this with you, or they can wait until the video is over and do it. Your page looks like this. I see the ark, but I don't see the rainbow. And so what I did and what you can do is you can get a rubber band and take some watercolor markers and hold them in together and, and put that rubber band around them so it's easy to hold. Now you have to take the caps off. Mine are back on now. And then what I did is I made a rainbow on top of my paper. And then um, if you get a spray bottle and spray just a little bit of water and let it dry, it might look like this. This is what mine looks like now. So maybe Mommy and Daddy can help you do that. And that rainbow helps us remember that God keeps all his promises. Very good. All right, maybe you made your craft or maybe you're going to make it later. But if you did it already, welcome back. And if not, I'm glad you're still here. So we have an assignment. Um, today we learned that God never lies, so I want each of you to choose a way you can thank God this week for always doing what he says he'll do. So, you can thank him every time you eat a meal for giving you food and a house to live in and clothes to wear, or when you see a rainbow in the sky after a rain, you can um, tell somebody how God never lies and that's his promise. Or maybe you can draw a rainbow in paper and then fold it and put it in your pocket. And every time you feel it in there or remember it, you can remember that God always does what he says. So you can um, thank God when you say your prayers for your food and your house and your clothes. Or you can see a rainbow and tell a friend God doesn't lie. Or you can make your own rainbow and put it in your pocket so you will remember. And I think when I see a rainbow, I'm going to tell somebody God never lies. But you choose what you're going to do and make sure you tell mommy and daddy, okay? Great job. Now we're going to say our closing prayer and end for today. God never lies. And I love knowing that and knowing I can believe all of God's promises. And I bet there's something you love about God. So when I'm saying my prayer, if you can think of something else, you can say that too. We can also ask God for things that we need. So think about some things you need, and you can ask God while we're praying. So join me in prayer. Dear God, we're so thankful to you. We love you so much, and we're so happy that you keep all of your promises and never lie, and we know we can trust you. And God, this week, I want you to help us remember you, remember that we can trust you, and help us to do the things that make you happy. Again, we love you so much, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, boys and girls. I love seeing you. I can't wait to see you in person. Have a great week. Bye-bye.